Okay, so why do good people go to hell? Um, this is a question a lot of Christians ask. Actually, I would say mostly non-Christians ask it, but there are some Christians who ask it too. Why would good people go to hell? You know, my neighbor, he's not a Christian, he's not saved, he doesn't believe in Jesus, but he's a nice guy, pays his taxes, he, you know, helps you when you need to be helped, he doesn't steal, he doesn't cheat on his wife, he's a good guy. Why would this guy go to hell? Well, the problem is the standard, right? Say, for example, you have a $20 steak. $20 steak is a good steak. But say you have an $80 steak, okay? I've only had like an expensive steak twice in my life, but an expensive steak is like a really good steak. Like an $80 steak puts a $20 steak to shame. So you could have this $20 steak and you think it's a good steak, but then you gauge it against the $80 steak and you're like, that wasn't nearly as good as I thought it was. So when you die and you face the creator, you face the judge, He's not going to gauge you against me. He's not going to gauge you against, you know, the guy across the street. He's not going to gauge you against your cousin. He's going to gauge you against his standard. He's going to gauge you against his perfect, holy standard. And guess what? You fell way short. That's what you're going to find out. Like you're not only are you going to find out that, well, what do you know? I did have a few sins. Like you're going to find out that you had like all orders of sins. You had this mega pile of hundreds of thousands of sins. Let me give you something to think about. Let's, let's even put, you know, God aside for a second and just think about your secular life. Think about if you had to go to court and face a judge for every illegal thing you've ever done. Okay. Every time you sped, every time you uh, ran a stop sign or didn't come to a complete stop, Every time you didn't turn your blinker on, maybe when you were a kid you used to steal stuff, maybe now you steal stuff, you got to face up for all of that, you got to face up for every time you drank and drove. Um, think, just think about every illegal thing you have ever done in your entire life. And if you had to face up to all of that stuff at once, like a judge literally knew every illegal thing you had ever done, all the music you had downloaded, I mean the list could go on and on. You would go to jail for the rest of your life. You would go to jail forever if every illegal thing you ever did got, boom, got brought up at once. So when you go to face God and you get gauged against his, you know, holy moral standard, you're going to find that not only did you fall short, you fell way short. You had millions of sins. Every time you lusted, you looked at a girl with lust, you watched porn, girlfriends you might have cheated on. Uh, all the times you were bragging and proud or gossiping or putting people down or angry at people without cause or hating people and wishing ill upon them, you'll find that you just got sin after sin after sin after sin. There's just going to be, like I said, this big stinking pile of sins behind you when you go to face the Creator. And you're going to go, go, you know, you're going to realize like you have no recourse. And although you thought you were a good person, God's looking at you like, sorry, bro, like you are not a good person. So that's it. I mean, once that judgment day comes, you don't have your sins wiped clean by accepting Jesus as your savior. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have all of that. You go to hell. You have, you've been cleansed. You've received forgiveness of sins in life. You saw that you were a sinner, you chose Christ, you got your slate wiped clean, you get to go to heaven. You, basically what it comes down to is you opted into holiness on earth, and so therefore you get to go to the holy place in the afterlife. You don't opt into holiness on earth, you're going to the unholy place. So I wanted to say something too about hell, okay? When people say that they've had a vision or people say, uh, you know, maybe they've had a miraculous healing and things of that sort. I mean, I do believe you have to take that stuff with a grain of salt. But at the same time, I absolutely believe that stuff happens. Miracles happen. Visions happen. God-given visions happen. I absolutely believe in all of that type of stuff. And so I've looked up a lot of different accounts of people who claim that they've gone to hell. And they all... They all have the same story and they all tell it the same way, okay? And when I say people have gone to hell, I mean either A, God supernaturally took them on like a, a hell-based vision, or, uh, you know, you have people who died for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and they say that they went to hell. A, 
these people all tell the story or they look scared while they're talking about it. They usually cry. Like all, all accounts indicate that these people are sane and they're not liars. And like I said, they, they all have a very similar story and they all tell their story in a very like sombering or sobering, uh, you know, type of manner and such. So I bring all of that up because when they talk about hell and they talk about how bad it is and they talk about eternal torment and fire that doesn't extinguish and people who are tortured but they never die, they, they rip each other apart, they're burnt, they're, their limbs are removed and everything just kind of regenerates. It's just this perpetual undulating torture that just goes on and on and on and on. And people, people will talk about weird stuff in hell. People will talk, not that that's not weird, but they'll talk about things like how, because see, let's say you were being tortured in jail. If you were being tortured in jail, you could kind of bond with the guy next to you. Like he's being tortured, you're being tortured. There's some degree of like, we're going through this together. There's some type of comfort in that, no matter how bad the torture might be, you might still feel like, at least it's not only happening to me or like I can sympathize. Like there's some type of camaraderie there. But when people talk about hell, they talk about how even though there's like billions of people being tortured, like as far as the eye can see, it's just sprawling with people being tormented. You just feel like you're completely alone. Like whatever that is that God gives us on earth, that ability to relate to other people, to connect to other people, to sympathize, like all of that seems to be gone in hell. And it's just like, you're alone. Like there's a billion people all completely alone. How does that happen? I don't know, but that seems to be what happens in hell. Anyway, the point of me bringing all of this up is to say that all the accounts that I have heard of, of people going to hell, if they have any type of interaction with like an inhabitant of hell, whether it was somebody they used to know or somebody they never knew or whatever, you never hear anybody say, I don't deserve to be here. I don't know why I'm here. I, I did everything right. I don't understand why I wound up in this place. From all the accounts that I have seen, nobody in hell says that. They all say, <laughs> they all say the same thing. They all say it's horrible. They all say it's terrible. They all say they don't want to be here. They all say they wish they could get out. They all say to go warn people, tell them their sinful life isn't worth it. You don't want to come here. But none of them say that they don't deserve it. So from our perspective here on earth, we might want to look at people in hell and say, well, they don't deserve that. They're good people went to hell. But it seems to be that when those good people get to hell, they know exactly why they're there. God has pressed upon them the totality of their sins, and uh, they get it. Maybe we don't get it, but they get it. So the answer as to why good people go to hell, good according to what standard? Good according to my standard? Good according to your standard? Good according to the guy across the street standard? According to our standard, I guess there's all kinds of good people that go to hell. According to God's standard, and according to the people who are in hell, there are no good people in hell because everybody knows why they're there. So um, that's it. Thanks for watching. God bless.